Hey, when you're building your Foxblox projects, do you know where the shear walls are? Or do you know what a shear wall is? I want to cover that in this video and hopefully we'll all get better at what we're doing because you kind of need shear walls. So what is a shear wall to start with? I stacked six of our mini block, or actually seven of our mini block up on top of each other. That would make a nine foot four tall wall and one block long would be four foot. Now, if that was full of concrete and this was going to be your shear wall, that would actually give you enough strength for a lot of projects out there so that when you get a big wind load against or seismic activity with things shaking, this is going to help keep that roof from rotating or moving over and falling down. That's what a shear wall does. It helps give you that strength from racking from different forces fighting against your building. Now, if you did a six foot long shear wall, you would have even more strength. Put those together, you'd have a 10 foot shear wall. That would give you even more strength. So shear walls can be many different lengths depending on what you need. And I'm gonna show you what you need using some charts that we have. Now, in the US, you guys have this covered really well in your building code. In Canada, we did a little bit of extra work with a prescriptive design book so that we help out the building officials on how they do um, shear walls. So first of all, if we go to our website, and that's foxblocks.com, and then we go to the resource center, that's the fourth selection over, then I'm gonna come into where we get all our resources. This is where you find all the fun stuff in the Foxblox website. I'm gonna go to the engineering hub, and under that, I'm gonna go down to prescriptive tables. And in the prescriptive tables, we actually have um, prescriptive design for the U.S. and lintel design for the U.S. That covers you off really well. So you can use that or you can go straight to your building code and that will help cover you off as well. In Canada, we have uh, prescriptive design for Ontario, B.C., Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba and Nova Scotia. And then we have another one that's for Quebec, New Brunswick and Prince Edward Island. And there's just slight variations to them, but they preferred that we'd have them in a separate book, so we did that. So now, if I open that up, right here, there you have it, the Canadian Engineering Specifications. And this is all engineered. If I fit page, you're going to see engineer stamps on that. And those engineer stamps go throughout the book. So for every table that we have, every chart that we have, the engineers have reviewed it, gone over the numbers, put their stamp on it, they're okay with it. So let's start with going through this book. I'm going to go to page three. And on page three, let me blow this up a little bit. You're going to have the um, number one, design parameters for this book. That's on page 12. Now you want to go to page 12. You want to find out if your project actually fits within the scope of this book. And if it does, by all means, you can use the charts and it'll fit for you, okay? The next thing you wanna scroll down for shear walls is you're gonna find on page 19, shear walls. And there it gives a good explanation of what a shear wall is and whether or not your walls will actually fit into the criteria of, of a shear wall. And then the last thing I wanna look at here is in the appendix, appendix one, that is the climatic and seismic information. That's on page 99. Now I'm gonna go there right now and gather a few numbers so that we can go and figure out what shear walls we need for a project. So I'll go to the back of the book, page 99. That's appendix C. And I'm actually gonna scroll up a few pages. I'm gonna to go to page 20, 122, division B, appendix C. And the reason I chose this table is because we're getting a lot of projects happening in Nova Scotia. Lots. And I can't count how many wallet cards we have in Nova Scotia. There's a lot of contractors there building with Fox Locks right now. And so I want to help them out a little bit. I'm going to go to Halifax because Halifax just happens to be right on this line. Now I'm sorry this is sideways. I'll, maybe if I need to I'll put something on the screen later. But if I, cho if I choose this, Nova Scotia and then Halifax, and I'll scroll all the way to the end. And on the end, you're gonna look at hourly wind pressure and then seismic data. Now in the hourly wind pressure, there's two choices for um, columns. 
One is one tenth and one's one fiftieth. You want to use one fiftieth because the charts that or the tables that we're going to go to use one fiftieth. And so that's the column I'm going to use. And I'm going to go all the way down to Halifax, and that number is 0 0.58. So I want to remember that number. 0 0.58 is their wind for that area that you use for the tables. So now in the seismic data, I'm going to use the very first column because that's what they use in those tables. And in um, Halifax, it's 0 0.23. That's the seismic data I need to collect. So I have those two numbers, 0.58 and 0.23, and that's going to help me out in the table. So now I want to go to um, the, the shear wall tables and start, I think, on page 27, 28. But I'm going to page 29. So let's see what I'm on here. That's table A6. I want table A4. This is table A5. Well, actually, I'm going to go all the way to table A3. That's the start of them. So now in table A3, if I look up at the top, the hourly wind pressure, it shows the 150th. That shows that we were in the right column. That's why we chose that column. And this shows less than 0.5. Now, we were 0.58, so we're above 0.5, so we could not use this page. This table does not work for us. So I'm just going to go one page over, table A4. In table A4, the hourly wind pressure under the 150th column is less than 0.75. So we're 0.58, we fit that. So this is the right table. We want to use table A4. So now the next thing is seismic. The, right at the top here it says seismic zone classification. And there it's SA 0.2. That's what we're at. We were using that column. That's where we got that. And this first area is less than 0.15. Now we were 0.23. So that would not work. We could not use this area. It's not strong enough. If I go to the next one, it's less than 0.25. That fits. We're in that because we were 0.23, right? So now below that, number of shear walls needed. One, two, three, or four. You have a choice. So now below this, the very first selection is main floor ICF walls with one-story ICF structure. Let's say that's what we have. We Just a one-story. That could be on a slab on grade. That could be on a basement. That could be on a stem wall. doesn't matter. This is the above grade main floor with only roof above it. So I'm going to use that. And let's say that in my wall side, there's every job has four sides. doesn't matter how many corners you have. You could have 20 corners on this job, but there's four sides. Now you pick a side and any wall in that side can be a shear wall. So now let's just say this here um, mini block section I have here is one wall side. That could be the north side of the building or the west side of the building. But any wall in that plane could be a shear wall. So here I could have one, two, three, four shear walls in that one wall side. So I could have up to four on that one. And according to this, if I would need one wall that's 12 foot long or two walls that are six foot long or three walls that are four foot long or four walls that are three foot long. You have a choice, any one of those. So let's just say I have one wall. Let's say this wall here is 12 foot long. I'm covered, that's all I need. You could fill the rest of this up with windows. It doesn't matter because that one wall is doing the job for you. That's a shear wall, that's what it's doing. So now let's say I don't have a 12 foot wall. All I have is, let's say a seven foot wall and two four foot walls. Well, in this case, a seven foot wall would do it. Well, here I need two six-foot walls. That could be a seven-foot wall and an eight-foot wall would fall under that. Or three four-foot walls. Let's just say we have three four-foot wall sections. So that's like this in three separate spots. There can be windows in between them. doesn't matter. But that is a shear wall. So I have three of them. Now if I go and choose that one, I go underneath and let's pick our wall height. Eight, nine, ten. 12, 14, or 16 foot height. Let's pick 9 foot height. 9 foot height works. If I scroll across the 9 foot height under that seismic classification and I have three 4 foot wall sections, I would need three bar. 
three pieces of rebar. If my wall was 10 foot high, I would need four pieces of rebar. And what that calls for, I'm just going to back up a little bit here. If I go a few pages back, there's construction detail drawings. And then these drawings, they'll show four inch thick wall, six inch thick wall, or eight to 10 inch thick wall. And if I need three bar right here on the side, that's how I would place them in a six inch wall. That's how I'd place them in a four inch wall, and that's how I'd place them in an eight inch or 10 inch wall. So that's what the three represents, is the number of bar you need on each side. So in this case, four foot wall section, four foot long, three pieces of rebar on each side. That's six pieces all together. And they have to be positioned like this because if I scroll to the bottom in the notes, it says I need an inch and a half concrete cover on those three bar. So I would have to position them like that in order to get that coverage. And that would meet the engineering. Now, if I had four bar, I would place them like this. So if it's a 10 foot high wall, then I would need four bar like this. Five bar is like this. That's probably a 12 foot wall. So now let's go back to A4, table A4. You can see now we got that all covered off. If I go down to, let's say I have a main floor ICF walls of a two story ICF structure and it's nine foot high again, or let's go eight foot high on the, on the second floor. No, this is main floor. This is the main floor of a two story structure, nine foot high. I go across to that column and the three four foot walls don't fit anymore. Now I'd need three of them at six foot eight, or I need two of them at 10 foot or one of them at 20 foot or four of them at five foot. So let's just pretend this is a five foot long wall. I'd need four of these in that one wall side, right? So that's how you do shear walls. It's really not that difficult and it's not intense at all. You just need to know how to guide yourself through the book and you'll be able to do proper shear walls. And if you follow that and you've met this and that's got engineer stamps underneath every one of those tables, you can see that here. You follow that and you'll be able to put your windows or your doors as close to the corner as you want and anywhere you want in the building as long as you have those shear walls. Now that building is going to be strong. So hopefully that helps you out and hopefully we all get a little bit better at what we're doing and we build structures that will last us for 100 years. And we'll see you at the next video.